Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Little Woody appears in court as young judge judge makes decision on the future on if young uh, thug key witness Little Woody would be testifying. Sit back. If you subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. That's all I'm asking. My number's on the screen, 917-680-9091. That's this phone. I do answer it. Leave a voicemail. You get response back first. And, you know, you can text. And if you got anything you want me to talk about, shoot it to it. Let's get this thing started because this is going to be a good one. Little Woody going to be on the stand, and the new judge is going to assert her stance on who she is and who's running this courtroom. All right? You know what it is. Unique Mecca Audio, man. So now I'm over here. We're going to have little Woody get on the stand, and we're going to hear what he got to say. Then I'm going to break it down. But let me say this before I begin. You know what I mean? You don't want to wind up in this situation. So I'm telling you, get out the street if you're in the street, and don't get involved in the street if you're not already in the street. It's nothing glamorous. Little Woody said himself, and I'm going to say to y'all, verbatim from what Little Woody said. He said, you don't know what you'll do when you in that circumstance. You know, I know what I would do when I was in that circumstance or when I am in that circumstance. I handled mine and I stood 10 tools down because I was down with the oath and the code of the street because I chose at that time in my life to be a criminal. Now, I'm trying to be a citizen. I'm trying to wake y'all up so you know what's on the other side of this standing 10 toes down, which is getting life in prison plus 20 years and sitting in cell in a cell for 26 years praying that you wind up winning an appeal when you lost an appeal, lost an appeal, lost an appeal, lost an appeal. So you rat bastards. I'm inviting you to go pull my transcripts on PACER and you see how many appeals I fought and I never went back in front of the judge for nothing. If he wasn't releasing me, I didn't need to talk to him, so they didn't even invite me to their courtroom because I would not testify for the government under no circumstance. And that's what it's about when you're on the street. That's why I'm telling you don't be a part of the street because y'all ain't cut for that. Now, let's play Little Woody. Good morning, Mr. Copeland. I'm Judge Whitaker. I think you've been before me before in unrelated matters. But I'm, I'm the judge taking over this case now. So go ahead and have a seat. Um, what I want to ask you right now, I know that you um, have been given um, immunity with regard to your testimony. Um, and there had been, at some point, you didn't want to testify. At some point, you did want to testify. The first question I have for you... I know when to testify. Okay. The, the now, look, I want you to pay attention how this judge take control to let her know that she's not the house nigga Glanville. She's not Suge Knight Glanville. Hey, you know what I mean? This woman is showing you how these Europeans court is run. She's talking real respectable, real calm to get it on the record. If he want to act up and be a little woody from the street, she's welcoming and ready for all that because she got a court plaintiffs, uh, bailiffs in the courtroom. Now, she let him know what time it is. Look at the difference with how she interview him, question him, and deal with him compared how the house nigga did it. And somebody send this to the house nigga because I don't respect none of you fake judges because all of y'all is some crap. All right, let's get this 100. Let's go. First, well, right, want to is maybe the wrong term. But my question for you right now is do you have an attorney at all? I don't know. You don't know? Big mistake right there. They ask you if you got an attorney, even if you don't have an attorney, you say, yes, I have an attorney. 
Even if you didn't pay that attorney and the attorney say you owe me money until you pay me, I'm not testifying. You tell that judge I have an attorney. And then the judge is going to make him come in and represent you if you say that he was your attorney and you can show that you have paid him money in the past and for an ongoing case. They said the judge would say, all right, well, you sit in and hear this out. But he's screwing up right there. But he's going to try and clean it up. Pay attention. This is how we get down. Whether you have an attorney, I would think that would be a no then if you don't know where you I was talking to Melanie, but... Now, once he said Mel makes name, that restructured where the judge could go from there because he's mentioned that he had an attorney named Melnick, so she have to look into that before she go any further. So she's going to go on with a line of questioning and include Melnick as the attorney, even though he's saying he don't have an attorney, but he had a Melnick as the attorney. Melnick? Yes. Okay. Um, didn't you, didn't he ask to be relieved as your attorney, and did you sign something saying, that's okay, you can get out of this? I don't, I don't. You don't remember? Okay. Does anybody know whether that actually occurred? Hmm. Pay attention. I don't believe it occurred. I, okay. I believe that Miss Bumpus. Um, I know she was standing. She, she, she was standing, and and I believe something was said on the record to the effect that Miss Bumpus was was relieved. But yeah, I know I she was. There but... was nothing about Mr. Melnick, to my knowledge. Okay. Maybe we. There was. Miss Miss Bumpus <sighs> actually said um, yesterday, I believe, during her testimony that. Mr. Melnick had directed her to tell <sighs> Mr. Copeland that uh, he could either exercise his, you know, well, he could choose one not thing, to testify. Right. Or if he chose to testify, according to Ms. Bumper. Yeah, I remember she said there's this paper I'm supposed to get him to sign. I'm trying to figure out whether it got signed. So I hmm. never got Mr. Melnick off my case. Okay. So he's still your attorney then? I guess. Okay. All right. Well, then that's. See, right there, once he said that he's still his attorney on the case, the course and shape of everything in this proceeding is going to be different because they respect you when you have an attorney. So just in case he, Melnick is on the case, the judge have to treat it as if he is on the case. So remember that. If you paid a lawyer to handle a case in the past and they asked if you have an attorney, even if the lawyer said that you got to pay me before I go further, you tell them that you do have an attorney that will shut down a proceeding where they have to question that attorney to see if he's on the case. So they might even tell him, come take the case pro bono, or it'll at least stall to give you time to get a case. These are the tricks you got to know. You say you want to be a criminal, you want to be on the street, but this is too much crap to go through, so that's why I say don't get involved in the street. <laughs> All right? The answer we've got for that. All right, so um, I'm going to try to get a hold of Mr. Melnick and see if he can be here with us this afternoon because... Um, some of what I, I suspect you recall when you were brought into Judge Glanville's chambers with Ms. Bumpus and a couple of the people from the state, and um, there was a discussion that Ms. Bumpus and Ms. Hilton and Judge Glanville had with you. You asked some questions. They gave you some information. Some of that information was not actually factually correct, um, and I want to make sure that you have the opportunity understanding what it is that the immunity order means, understanding what the potential consequences are if you do testify or if you don't. We're basically going to kind of start over and so do that over. Testify, wait. Huh? So if I don't testify, how long are you going to hold me in jail? So, I mean, that's still an issue that um, you can be held in jail through the end of this trial. But I'd rather have Mr. Melnick here to uh, advise you about the potential drawbacks of and benefits of what, if there are any, this of any of right your... Hmm? To the end of this trial? Yes. Not the other people? Not as far as I believe, but the state, what, did you want to do some further research on that? Yes, just to advise the court okay. of... Okay, so 
I just wanted to know, first off, do you have an attorney? Because if you do have an attorney, then your attorney may have some information, advice, and research for me about that. So I want to make sure that I tell you the correct thing about that, okay? So um, we're going to take a lunch break in a little while, and why don't we plan to have you back here on standby at least. Um, I don't know who was in communication, but we need to reach out to Mr. Melnick, see what his availability is. Um, so just be on standby in case I need you here like at, at two or three this afternoon. Two or three? Yeah. He pull out his phone like he got something to do. Too much longer. Um, <laughs> he so still think it's a game. Okay to leave for the next couple of hours, but stay where the whomever reached out um, from the state can reach you to let you know whether you need to be back here this afternoon or potentially tomorrow instead, okay? All right. All right, thank you. Hmm. All right. You see how that played out? Nice and simple. That woman took charge of her courtroom and let them know exactly what time it is, you know? So what I'm trying to tell you is y'all got to really pay attention so you understand. Let me go to the black screen here. You know what I mean? I'm going to go to the black screen as, you know, I run through this video to try and see if I could, uh, you know, find something else on this. Because there's another part where he came in after lunch. Little Woody appears in court. Okay, that was the first time. You know what I mean? Uh, Thug Trial explains new uh, testimony. Let's try this one. We're going to see what this one right here is, you know, and see if this is the one that we're looking for. So I can show you how it play out. Yeah, I'm sweating because it's hot in the studio today. It's raining. I can't put the fan on. You know what I mean? While I do this, uh, while I do this thing here, because it'll make noise in the joint. You know? Now, little Woody, right? Here we go. All right. Hello again, Mr. Copeland. Um, yeah, this is what I wanted. Mr. Melnick is um, with us by Zoom right now. Um, you can see him on the video screen and he can see you. If there's any time you want to talk to him privately, let me know that. Um, and I know y'all have had an opportunity since you and I um, spoke this morning from the bench in the stand to talk um, about the fact that the state... Um, is not interested in you pleading the fifth and in order to avoid you pleading the fifth they have um, secured an order that says you now can be essentially compelled to testify because we are acknowledging that anything that you say we cannot prosecute you for a crime other than perjury or false statements based on something that you might say that would otherwise incriminate you if it weren't for this immunity order. Um, and if, if knowing that you still choose not to testify, the court can and will hold you in contempt. And what happens in that event is that you go to jail and the length of time that you could be held in jail for if you don't change your mind and say, okay, I guess I will take the stand, is through the end of this trial. I don't know how long it's going to last. I think previous projections had been February or March of next year. I don't know yet, but I guess that's not outside the realm of possibility. But it would only be through the end of this trial. It would not be through the end of whomever else might be severed from this case and tried later. Now, you see what she did? She just let him know that you got to stay till the end of this trial. This trial might be, be until February or March, so we're going to lock your black ass up for the summer. Shut your YouTube down. Shut your revenue down from you getting on other people's podcasts and shut everything down for you for the summer and winter until after Young Thug is finished with his trial. At the very least. So now we're going to see how he's going to play this. What would you do is my question to you that all of y'all got this judging for Woody and saying he's a this, he's a that. What would you do if you're in that situation where you already been telling, you know what I mean, for years, 
And then now you go in there, you get over by playing this shenanigans with the house nigga, Suge Knight Glanville, you know? And then now you get a white woman in there when nine times out of ten, you're all scared of white people. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the white woman is talking to you real nicely and letting you know that this is on the record. This is not an ex parte illegal meeting, but I can get involved now because all the attorneys is here. The defense attorney and your attorney is present on the Zoom so this is where we at, Woody. What are you going to do? So my question to y'all is, what would you do in that situation? Would you say, lock me up so I can clear my name or attempt to clear my name? Because once you take the stand, there is no clearing the name when you take it a stand to testify against someone. Plenty of comrades taking a stand to, you know what I mean, to, to represent someone to try and free them. But you can't take the stand and give testimony and proffers and everything else to try and get somebody locked up and then come back and say, I'm not going to testify. And that wipes the record clean and now I'm a stand up man again. It don't work that way. So get off the street if that's what you think it. Let me finish playing this tape. Um, and I know Mr. Melnick's talked to you in more detail about that. So I want to um, see if you have any questions of the court about that. I didn't understand. Now you said it at the beginning. <laughs> didn't I? See, he's trying to start a shenanigans. I don't understand. Nigga, you understand what that white woman said. You know what I mean? But this the games that he played with the house, nigga. And now, you know what I mean? The, the master's wife is going to let him know how the court really works. Check out how she keeps the composure and how she talks to him like a school teacher talking to a dumb Nigra. <laughs> All right? Now, check. understand anything. All right, so. You know what I'm saying? Like, I heard you, but I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so. Tell me what it is that you'd like more information about. Hmm. You, said, you said something about what they said about immunity? Yeah. What do hmm. you mean? Okay. Does anybody, I think I've got the order. Mr. Melnick, have you reviewed the immunity order with him? Oh, you saying the same, the same from last time? Hey, hang on a second. Yeah, yeah, the same one as last time. Yeah, yeah. last one. So that's the one I'm talking mm -hmm. about. And, and that is still in effect. So you're saying that changed? It has not. Hell changed. no, it ain't changed, Woody. All right. So what has changed is it's my opinion that I cannot hold you in jail if you refuse to testify beyond the end of this trial. I think you had maybe been told something different earlier, and and I don't think that is. So I ain't got to wait to every defendant that's not here. Correct. Hmm. But you would, if you choose not to testify despite this order, you would potentially be held in jail through the end of this trial, which might be February of next year, might be March of next year. I really don't know. It ends. See, she letting them know, dog, you're going to be at least six months if you play these games with me, man. At least six to eight months. Yeah, about six months, because this is August. So let's stop the shenanigans, Woody. You know you's a rat. You know you've been a rat. Let's just keep this thing moving, get the trial going, and bury your comrade like you signed on to do with Miss Love and Simone Hilton. Stop the games, Woody. That's what she's telling them real politely. It's when it ends. And they, the state has 100 more witnesses, and I don't know, any defendant might also have witnesses. So. You heard that? She's letting them know, right? Indirectly. She's doing the same thing Glanville did, but this is the way they play the games in court to act like they on the side of the law and justice and lady justice is blindfolded and don't see no this and that. That's the game. But she's telling him, oh, there's going to be 100 witnesses. He know he been up here two, three weeks. So you got 100 witnesses two, three weeks. Even a week, you already know what you're talking about. You're talking about another two years. So that's how she's manipulating this to let the brother know, man, you know, we're going to keep your ass in jail for a very long time. It's going to be a bid by the time you get out because Young Thug is standing on business and he's doing a bid just going to trial. All right? So Woody... What are you going to do? You viewers, you watching, be honest, put it in the comments. You know, we're not going to bash you. What would you do in this situation if you already been telling, you done got on the stand for two weeks, you tried to blow the case up, you didn't blow the case up, all you did was blow up the judge and the prosecutor because now they want to get rid of the prosecutor, already got rid of the judge, and then now you come back in front of a white woman. She even said she's bringing her own stenographer. She don't even trust Jack Glanville's people. He's supposed to be the chief judge. Pay attention to what's going on, y'all. It could take a while. See? But that would be the end of it, would be the end of this trial. Hmm. Okay? So do you have 
Any other questions? Mm -mm. Okay. And uh, do you want to talk to Mr. Melnick any more about this? Right there is where he's supposed to say yes. Go in there and talk to Melnick and get a full understanding. Always talk to your attorney and never say, I don't want to talk to my attorney. You already said you got an attorney, Woody. If you got an attorney, then you need to talk to your attorney to get clear understanding of what's going on. Don't listen to the prosecutor. Don't listen to the judge. Listen to the lawyer because you have what you call attorney-client privilege and he's the only one there that's to protect your interests. The prosecutor's job is to protect the interests of the taxpayers that form the indictment against you to bring the charges against you. The judge's interest is to make sure everything is fair, just, and blithe, and that's why you see Lady Justice with the blindfold over her eyes, but obviously Glenfell never had blindfold over his eyes, and neither do she, Miss Whitaker, but she's being real polite and nice with it, but letting them know you're going to be in jail a long time. You want to play this game with me like you played with Glanville. So you can either not testify, go get locked up till the trial is over, or you can come in here and testify truthfully and don't play no games when you come in here. This is what she's telling them. Pay attention to this now. This particular issue. No. All right, so I'm going to ask you right now because I'm planning to have the jury back on hey. Monday. Um, and I am going to tell them... Um, we, we would essentially start over because... You see, she letting them know that, yo, we're going to have the jury in here, Woody, right? And I want to be straight up with you so you understand where I'm at, Woody. This is what she's saying to him. This is the judge talking to him, you know. Like, I want you to be fully understood that I'm going to bring the same jury in here that you made a mockery of Fulton County Chief Judge Blanville. But I'm not going to allow you to do that in my courtroom. So it's your choice. Do you want to go to jail? Let me know that right now until the trial is over. It might be over 100 witnesses, and it might be until February or March of 2025, Woody. It's your choice what you want to do, Woody. But don't let me bring this jury in here and you pull these shenanigans that you did with Glanville. Glanville is one of you in a row and he thinks that he's one of us on the inside, a.k.a. an Oreo. I'm just keeping it real. I'm an old school gangster, man. It's a gangster channel talking to the youth to let them know that you don't want to be like me. I'm not the role model to be as far as my criminal life. But as far as me enlightening you right now, I'm letting you know. This woman is letting Woody know, don't let me bring this jewelry in here. And you do this crap you did in front of Glanville. This is what she's letting them know. Now, let's move forward. Because I want you to have a voluntary, to an extent, choice <laughs> and knowing choice whether to take the stand and be questioned and cross-examined or not, uh, knowing that if you do, other than if you lie, as Mr. Melnick discussed with you, and it's something the state knows and can prove, they could charge you with perjury or false statements. But they can't, sh if you say, if, if you incriminate yourself about another kind of crime, they cannot use that to charge you with a crime. And they can't say, you know. Well, can I speak? All right, see, right there. Now, he asked, can he speak? You still think you in charge, Woody. This is not the prosecutors that you was trying to manipulate and that was manipulating you to be in the situation that you're in right now. You ask and can you speak? Right there, for those of y'all watching, that's where Woody should have asked, can I speak to my attorney? Instead, you trying to think you're going to go back and forth with this white woman that know how to run her court, know how, know how to manipulate you and still let you know that she's in control, but Glanville is just a power-hungry nigga that they put in a black robe that thinks that he's white on the inside, a.k.a. an Oreo. So he thinks he could just rough the trial off and talk to you like you crazy, and that's where the friction came in, how we got to where we at, that we had the 50 greatest moments of Little Woody because Glanville tried to battle a street nigga like he was a street nigga when he know that when he went to school the street nigga screwed his girl you know what I mean screwed his sister screwed his mother and dogged them all the way out so he can't stand the street nigga 
So now he's trying to go at Woody like that. So they tried to go at it, street nigga to house nigga. And that didn't work because Woody obviously not all the way street nigga was he wouldn't be sitting there on the stand talking about he's going to testify. So let's cut the crap. But he's asking, can he say something? Nigga, any one of y'all watching this, ask, can I speak to my lawyer? That shuts down the proceeding. Give it a pause. That's the only thing that gives it a reset when you ask to speak to your attorney. Not when you ask, can you speak? Because you're nothing in the courtroom but a nigga. The same as Glanville. Glanville don't realize he's just a nigga in the courtroom. He just don't understand he's just a nigga. Stop it, man. All right, let's get this thing rolling because I don't even really think that y'all understand how serious this is. You can, yeah, I have told you have the a, state. Huh? I have told the state I have lied and lied and I lied, know, and lied. I know. And, so and, how are they going to be able to question me? I mean, that'll be their problem. That's, that's their case to make or not make. I mean, that's not for you or me to worry about. So they said they're gonna be able to charge me if I lie. Like when they, it's up to them to choose uh, when I'm not, lying. Not, not prior. To that. You've said you've lied and lied and lied in every. I don't know what you've said, but it, it, let's even say you've said you lied in every statement you ever gave to the police. If you get on the stand and say that again, or or if you say, all right, this look how she break truth, it down. That one they cannot charge you with perjury for because those are things in the past. What they might be able to charge Look you at her examples. is, I don't know, I mean, give me an example of something that huh. you know he didn't do, and, well, maybe not, never mind, don't do Can that. Can I give you an example for what they told me? Huh, yeah, now he want to yes, blow them up, now he want to tell on them, who he been telling for the longest? Yes. She said that the only reason she won't lock me up, I just want to know if it still applies. Yeah. Okay. She said if I do two things, if I plead a fifth, and I say that I killed Donald Tunis. Okay. She said if I don't say them two, she will not lock me up. All right. That was, was her, nigga. Playing the fifth. Hmm. Say it again. Taking the fifth, Judge. Taking the fifth. Okay, right. And you can no longer. So taking the fifth means I might say something that gets me. Yo, did you see that? The judge is so, 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 so far back from the urban community. She didn't know what taking the fifth means. I mean, come on, son. The lawyer that deals with the trenches, or as the courts call the scumbags, had to explain to her what little Woody is saying to translate what they call the hoodie bonics. Let's keep it moving. In criminal trouble. I might give you evidence against me that you could then use against me. That's what it means to take the fifth, is say, I am not going to give you evidence to use against me to charge me. When they give you that immunity order, I immune just basically means we can't do this anymore. It's like if you get an immunization, oh, I'm not going to get the measles now, right? Because I'm immune from it because I got, it's like getting you a shot that says, I can say, I can admit to a crime on the stand. They can't charge me with it. They, they have said, you no longer have a privilege against self-incrimination because we have committed to not being able to prosecute you, not being able to bring criminal charges against you because of what you say. We cannot take that evidence and use it against you. We can't take that evidence. You know, if you say, well, I, I, you, you know, I committed some crime. Here's what I committed it with. I buried it in the yard. They can't go dig it up in the yard and then say, well, mm -hmm. we've got this. They can't use any of that. So that's why taking the fifth at this point would get you in trouble. See, she's saying that bottom line is you could get on the stand and you could tell everything you ever did and we're not going to charge you in the state. But they're not saying that. They're playing these games with little Woody because they got a whole new federal indictment for him because he's making a mockery of Fulton County. So they will be charging little Woody in the feds. Mark my words, period. They will be charging little Woody in the feds. That's the way it works. This ain't no ratting for you rat bastard scumbag flip flop win and public trolls. This is how the courts work. His lawyer even mentioned about the feds and they tried to get him off it saying, oh, we don't know, da, 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 play these games. But little Woody, you're looking at federal charges because they're telling you to get on the stand, tell everything you know. And if you commit a crime and it's not a murder, 
that we're not going to charge you. So you can tell us everything Young Thug did. We can tell us everything Gunner did. You can tell us everything YSL Lucci did. You can tell everything that anybody from down in Atlanta or anywhere did. And that you did it with them and that you broke the law with them and we won't charge you with it here in Fulton County. But that only applies in Fulton County. Pay attention, y'all. Somebody let little Woody know this, man. Because the feds will be coming. The feds is watching all of this and putting their case together as they go along. Let's get this straight. Little Woody, you're supposed to have your lawyer explaining these things to you that you have Judge Whitaker explaining to you. That's why you said you have an attorney because they have your best interest. And any question you say or statement you say, if you say to your lawyer, right, then let me ride. So we ain't ride yet. You know? And subscribe if you're not subscribed. Definitely hit the notification bell. Hit the notification bell if you subscribe. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And don't forget the like button. And numbers on the screen, 917-680-9091. Let's keep it moving and take this ride. Now, so you fully understand, these people is not playing. They went to school to know how to prosecute us and use this so-called constitution against us when all we know how to do is sling dope, bust pistols, and gangbang is the way they look at it. So now he's saying, can I ask you a question? Now, nah, my brother, you need to say, can I talk to my attorney? At any time when it get confusing when you're dealing with the law, you say, may I have my attorney? I would like to speak to my attorney. That's automatic breaks all right being held in contempt is what we so where they don't have they, call it. they fit together like they saying something that they don't know what they're talking about and then they ask me about it they can they can ask you about anything they want to if in your answer you admit to a crime cash app on the screen hit the logo crime they cannot make sure it's say created in 2020 crime. now if you admit to a crime and they have evidence that is pretty certain that you did not commit that crime. For instance, somebody gets robbed yesterday, and they have proof that you were in Europe yesterday. There's no way you could have committed that crime. But you say, yeah, I committed that Pay crime attention. yesterday. That was here in Atlanta when they know you were in Europe. And Pay they attention. you in Europe, and you sent a postcard that said, I'm having fun in Europe. That would be proof that you're lying. And so that they could charge you with perjury for, okay? Or false statements for. Got that, Woody? Okay. Okay? <laughs> so what I want to know from you is when we have the jury back on Monday and you're still under subpoena, so you're still obligated to come, and I, I'm asking you now, when they're like, all right, we're calling Kenneth Copeland, are you going to... That's where she want to know. Are you going to do the shenanigans you did with this house, nigga? Or are you going to treat me, you know, like an officer of the court and testify like you're agreeing to do right now? Because if you're not, I'm going to lock your black ass up until February or March. If you are, I'm going to let you go home. And then you can show up Monday at 845 and we move forward in a civil matter to hang your homie. That's all she's saying. I'm just breaking it down so you understand. And that's why if you don't feel that this deserves a cash app, that's where you need to take three seconds to tap off my channel. And you know the rest. Take that with you. Put that wherever you feel it deserve it at. Because I hate you. Oh, I can't say hate. I can't stand you rat bastards and flip-flop wearing and public trolls that look for something to stop a good message. I right. say, okay, ask me what you want to ask me. I'll tell you whatever I'm going to tell you. Or are you going to say, nope, I don't care if you throw me in jail. I'm not saying a word. I am not getting on the stand. It depends on how I wake up. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, then we will just revisit it on Monday morning. So plan to be here at 845 on Monday morning. You're free to go for now. Get your ass out of there, will you? That's what she's telling you. Get your black ass out of there. What is wrong with you coming in my courtroom with this crap? You know what I mean? This is what this lawyer doing, man. She's not playing. 
She let it be known like it is. Let me pause this right here right, with this crazy it, nigga sitting on the stand. Now, you know what I mean? Let me let me pause this and get over there so you can see this simple nigga right here. Woody, stop talking without your attorney. They're not your friend. They acted like they was your friend in order to get you in the situation that you're in, which is the hot seat that you're sitting in around. This is not to disrespect you. This is just to wake up the people. You can't get mad at the YouTubers for calling you a rat bastard when you turn on your local TV and they calling you a rat bastard, talking about how you the key witness and, the, and you cooperated with the government, but you don't get mad at Fox News and Child 11 News and 12 News, but you get mad at a YouTuber for saying something. When they say the same thing they say, stop it. Cop the book of Roaring Harlem. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you already subscribed, Please, hit the notification bell. That's free. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and hit the notification bell. That's also free. If you want to go a step further to help the channel and the movement because you like the content and you represent and respect the fact that the game is to be sold, not told, the Cash App is on the screen right after my Instagram, right there, Unique Mega Hall. Hit the icon when you go to the Cash App and make sure it says it was created in 2020 and send a nigga something. If you don't want to send a nigga nothing, just subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you're already subscribed, remember to go back and hit the notification bell. If you're a rat bastard, I don't even want you on my channel. I don't want your notification bell. Don't even read my book. If you're a troll, that applies to you as well. Now, I've been on here long enough. Cop the book of the Roaring Harlem. Like I said, the cash app is on the screen. The game is to be sold, not told. Anybody that don't understand that need to get off this channel because every major streaming network has fundraisers. Stop it. Get these scumbags out of here, man. We got to make YouTube where we wake the youth up, not where we sit here playing this little game with them that, you know, dudes could do what they want to do and, you know, this is a game and... Anything a black man do, another black man trying to tear his back out. Look how they, look how these white people treating this young man. Come on, man, I'm tapping out. Remember to hit the notification bell. Cheers, 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 the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. The crime, the crime, the crime. Hey! Out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions a gift. Rush. You stand up ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in hall. Uh -huh. He cut from the bottom, Back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. Go the get Instagram it. page and the YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn. Real. Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin. Uh -huh. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do it. Uh -huh. Do not pay attention, would be stupid. It's talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on probably the reason that him and your grams got along a man that generated millions on the block did his time never squilling to the cops make an audio Get it live like two G's in the ninth. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Real. Treat her like my past, she behind me. What? Spin a couple bands on the dapper dan. Oh. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. Clint. No cap, Clint. it's a roaring yeah. uptown. Yeah. Baby horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Word. Now we on the positive. Word. You we got a lot to give. Yes. Now you trying yes. to stop the kids from being an operative. Uh. So take heed, homie, lend the air. Uh. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. Uptown. But up now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's nope. about buying property to make the community ours. So we